Hey, I'm Lisa with Lisa Moon Designs. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited to show you this transformation. This was a hot, hot mess. And I'm sure that it's gonna look amazing. I'm gonna be using milk paint. For the first coat, I'm actually gonna be using suitcase. It's brown. And the reason that I'm doing this is because this is a bleeder. And so I'm gonna put a brown, darker color as a top coat, and then we'll see how it goes. Let's get to it. I picked this desk up recently at an estate sale around the block from where I live. And it was in the back barn. Who knows how long it had been there and how old it really is. But it had seen some better days. It was grimy and really, really filthy. And it was a little bit wobbly. And I had to do a little bit of reinforcement and a lot, a lot of cleaning. And my husband was like, you paid way too much for this crap. But I think it turned out pretty good. So the first thing is first. I had to get out my brad nailer. That top part of that desk was coming up. It had come up unglued um, from the base inside. So I got my pancake air compressor and my brad nailer and I just went ahead and I put a few nails into the side there. And so the cleaning begins, or should I say deep, deep scrubbing. I used a scouring pad and I put water, hot water, and TSP and just scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed. And it took me a while to get the residue and the film and the gook off. And it was so, so nasty. My daughter was grossed out. And the hard thing is that I was working inside in a very tight, confined area and there was so much nastiness splattering all around. Look at the straw cloth, it was so gross. I mixed my milk paint and I started applying it with my S30 Klingon brush. And I'm telling you, I'm in some really confined areas and the struggle is real. Right behind me, I have six puppies in a kennel and then all of my dogs were going all around me and then the cat. It's hard to get anything done and I hadn't even eaten dinner and uh, my daughter made me some tortilla chips. I couldn't even eat them because I was trying to get this done. Um, so I applied one coat of suitcase and I promise there was dog hair and the cat even got brown paint all over her because she just wants to be right next to me and I'm like, girl, get your cat. So I just went ahead and I did a quick coat and because of the heat, the milk paint really dried very quickly. Sweet Pickens milk paint comes in so many fabulous colors. The next color that I chose to use was Sweetie Jane. This is a true milk paint. It comes in a bag in powder form and it has fabulous, fabulous pigments. As you can see, there's such a wide variety. So for every scoop, whatever your scoop is, whatever you're measuring with, you use one scoop of powder and one scoop of water. And then for the best result of mixing it really well, I like to use the immersion blender, but you could use a whisk. And then you want to let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes. But as I'm mixing it, I realized it was still a little bit thick. And so I wanted to add a little bit more water. You use the amount of water that you want to use. You can actually water this down even more to make a stain. But I wanted it to not be too thick and not be too watery because as it sits, it does thicken up. So I added just a drop more of water and then I went ahead and mixed it up again and I really like the consistency that I had. It's gonna be like a melted milkshake. I grabbed another Klingon brush, it's one of the flat brushes, and I applied the Sweetie Jane over top. And I had a really good consistency. I really liked the way that I blended that paint. And just so that you know, you always want to make the amount of paint that you're going to need for a project. It's best to make less paint than to waste paint. You can put it in a mason jar. That's why I like to use either a mason jar or these plastic container, um, they're to-go cups or to-go plastic containers and they have lids and I'll put them in the fridge for a short time period. But I went ahead and I just applied a coat of Sweetie Jane over top. 
Next, I decided to blend the suitcase into the pantry door. I've never blended milk paint before and it's not as easy as DIY paint, that's for sure. But I went ahead and I put it on the outside and on the tops of the drawer and then I went back with my Sweetie Jane and my flat brush and I went ahead and blended it. And it took me a few minutes to get my groove and to realize how I needed to blend it. And I end up having to go back and redo some of the drawers um, to get a, ben a better blending technique. This time around I applied a little bit less of the suitcase and I took my Sweetie Jane brush and I went back and I went up and down and then vertical and I really liked that technique for blending in the paint. I, I like to have the darker edges and then the lighter on the inside and I think it turned out really well. Typically, if you don't want your milk paint to chip, then you can put some extra bond on your first coat, on your base coat. So I would have done that on the suitcase, but I didn't do that because I wanted to see if it was gonna chip and what it was gonna do. You just never know with milk paint, it's so unpredictable. And I didn't have a game plan as to how I was gonna paint this. I just started painting it and immediately, it started crackling right there in the section where I'm painting and so I was almost scared to paint over it because I didn't want to ruin it. I loved the way that it looked but actually the entire thing ended up crackling right there and it just looked so so cool. I love the texture and the unpredictability of milk paint. It's so much fun. I mixed some more suitcase and I decided just to keep the sides brown and I applied it. My second coat went on so much better than the first coat and it really gave me some really good coverage. I grabbed a sanding sponge and I hit the entire piece, especially that top piece, uh, to blend it and to make it chippy and to distress it a little bit. If you don't mix your milk paint very well, you'll get chunks. And so if that's the case, don't worry about it. Just paint it. And then when you take your sanding sponge to it, those chunks will be removed and it will actually give you a nice distressed look. But when you dis when you sand this, it becomes so buttery smooth and so, so luscious. It's so awesome the way that it feels. Not only did I get some amazing crackling, I did get some chipping and I just hit it with the sanding sponge just to remove all of the pieces that were um, not adhering. And I definitely went and I hit all of the edges of the drawers and all of the sides as well. So I decided to take the IOD Explorations Transfer and I took the ones that had the brown tones and I added them throughout the top and the front drawers and I took things that were representative of exploration and I even cut out the words explore and I placed them on the front but I really love this transfer I recently did a small with the large ship you can see it here and I love the way that it turned out. I didn't think that I was gonna love this transfer as much as I do. And I like this because this piece could be for a girl or for a boy. Um, and I love it. Or a woman or a man. <laughs> See, whenever you use your transfer and you apply it, you do want to make sure it's burnished um, very well with a lint-free cloth or the back of the backing sheet. To seal this piece, I chose the Sweet Pickens Oil Wax and the chip brush, a cheesecloth, and a dish to pour out my oil in because you don't want to contaminate your oil and you want to use a little bit at a time and so just pour it out into a dish and apply it with your brush. You want to put on a good amount of oil wax on your piece. It's gonna look shiny and greasy but this is what you want. It's gonna give you an ultimate top coat. It cures in 30 days and it's gonna be rock hard. 
very very durable and so you just want to get go ahead and get it saturated all over and make sure that you have it spread out very good I actually went um, side to side and then up and down just to make sure that it was on there very well and I did the entire piece after the oil wax had sat on the furniture for 30 minutes, I went ahead and I took my cheesecloth and I absorbed all of the extra wax. And I just buffed it and rubbed it and just got it in there and removed all of the excess. And it's amazing how it changes it and makes it look so awesome. And here's what it looked like as soon as I had rubbed everything off. That crackle though. Oh my gosh, I love it. Guys, you can find all of the products that I used today on my website, lisaboondesigns.com. If you have any questions about this process or about anything having to do with sweet pickings, DIY paint, recycled, IOD, Go ahead and comment below or you can contact me at lisaboondesigns at gmail.com or on my Facebook as well. You can send me a message. I would love to hear from you. If you try this, if you try any of the products or any of the techniques that I ever use on any of my videos, I would love to see a picture. Go ahead and send me one. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I would love for you to subscribe to my channel so that you could receive lots of tutorials and I really want to be able to hear feedback from you. I can't wait to hear from you. I hope you guys have an incredibly blessed day. Thank you so much for watching.